right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gina Parsons Diamond, and I am the ACRL Program Manager for Data and Research. And I'm here today to talk to you about ACRL's newest data tool, the Threshold Achievement Test for Information Literacy, or TATL. Um, TATL was inspired by the Framework for Information Literacy for Higher Education and provides libraries and other educators with evidence to better understand the information literacy capabilities of their students. These data-driven insights inform instructors of weak areas, can help guide course instruction, can affirm growth following instruction, and can prepare students to be successful in learning and life. Information literacy is essential in today's world because it empowers students to effectively navigate, evaluate, and utilize the vast amount of information that's available to them. Being information literate enables people to make well-informed decisions, think critically, and distinguish reliable sources from misinformation or disinformation. It's a vital skill for students as it not only supports academic success, but also fosters lifelong learning and empowers them to be active and engaged in a rapidly changing society. Additionally, ACRL knows that your institution wants to know how the library um, contributes to institutional effectiveness and student learning. Employers care about information literacy, and we hope that Tattle can be a vital piece of your library's advocacy stories. So before we get started, um, if you could just have a quick show of hands of um, if you've heard of Tattle before this presentation today. Okay, it looks like many of you have, maybe about half. So if you've heard of it before, this is a great refresher. And if you're new, I hope you come away with something useful. So what is TATL? It is a simple, easy to use standardized test that measures the achievement of information literacy outcomes. And this is regardless of a student's major or research focus. Um, there are four modules that address learning across all the frames in the ACRL Framework for Information Literacy. Um, once your students have been tested, TATL also provides reports to help educators identify student areas of strength and some areas that may need improvement. And finally, TATL supports evidence-based decision-making and informs actions for strengthening student outcomes. So here's just a quick agenda of what we'll be talking about today. We're gonna to do a quick overview of the frames, and then we'll talk about the individual TATL models. Um, we'll go through the process of creating and administering tests. And finally, we'll walk through the very extensive reporting that TATL provides. And finally, at the end, we'll have some time for questions. So again, um, TATL is based on the uh, Framework for Information Literacy for Higher Education. If you're not familiar, the frames are freely available on the ACRL website. Um, and so when TATL was being developed, um, these themes that run through the ACRL framework, specifically the importance of community, critical thinking, curiosity, and perseverance shaped the approach by the librarians and other educators who developed TATL. Because of the inspiration of the framework, the TATL test, TATL tests facets of information literacy that have not been measured before, and that will lead to new conversations among librarians and their colleagues throughout higher education about how to develop students' information literacy proficiency. Um, so there are six frames available, um, six frames made up of the framework and they're listed in alphabetical order. So the first one is authority is constructed and contextual. 
So this really means that information resources reflect their creator's expertise and credibility and are evaluated based on the information need and the context in which the information will be used. Authority is constructed in that various communities may recognize different types of authority. It is contextual in that the information needed may help to determine the level of authority required. The next frame is information creation as a process. Um, so information in any format is produced to convey a message and is shared via a selected delivery method. The iterative process of researching, creating, revising, and disseminating information may vary, and the resulting product can reflect these differences. Up next is information has value. Um, and here we're talking about that information possesses several dimensions of value, including as a commodity, as a means of education, as a means to influence, and as a means of negotiating and understanding the world. Legal and socioeconomic interests influence information production and dissemination. Following that, we have research as inquiry. Um, and here we're discussing the fact that research is iterative and depends upon asking increasingly complex or new questions, whose answers in turn develop additional questions or lines of inquiry in any field. Next, we have scholarship as conversation. Um, so communities of scholars, researchers, or professionals engage in sustained discourse with new insights and discoveries occurring over time as a result of varied perspectives and interpretations. And last but not least is searching as strategic exploration. Searching for information is often nonlinear and iterative requiring the evaluation of a range of information sources and the mental flexibility to pursue alternative avenues as new understandings develop. And like I said, um, if you're not familiar with the frames, there's a lot of good work out there. I would encourage you to start with the standards themselves and work out from there. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about the Tattle modules. So Tattle is organized into four modules designed to be administered separately according to the outcomes you want to assess. The context for each module is inspired by one or more of the frames that we just discussed. Um, before we get into that though, I want to quickly speak about the timeline of Tattle development. So this all started in 2014 when a two-day workshop was held with academic librarians from around the US. Um, and the goal of this workshop was to determine whether a new instrument should be created given that ACRL recently moved to the framework. Um, and the consensus was that a new standardized test would bring valuable insights as schools made the transition from the standards to the new framework. And then in 2017, um, the tests were field tested and uh, the report format was finalized. Um, finally, in 2022, um, the ACRL board approved the purchase of Tattle, specifically citing the fact that Tattle increases our ability to advance equitable and inclusive pedagogical practices and environments articulated in the ACRL plan for excellence. With Tattle's valuable data and reports, libraries can build more effective information literacy programs and communicate compellingly about their role in supporting student learning. And just to let you know, um, you know, I've kind of been talking about the frames and the standards. The information literacy competency standards for higher education were rescinded by the ACRL board in June of 2016. Um, with the framework being the preferred mode moving forward. So Tattle tests measure both knowledge and dispositions in students regarding information literacy. And just so we're on the same page, here are the definitions we're using for those two terms. So students who attain knowledge of information literacy concepts and practices are well positioned to effectively address their information needs and contribute meaningfully to society. 
And dispositions are the qualities students cultivate that underlie and shape their actions. Strong dispositions are associated with lifelong learning and critical thinking. They can be strengthened through high impact pedagogical practices and social learning. So module one in Tattle is called Evaluating Process and Authority. And um, this module combines concepts from the two frames, authority is constructed and contextual and information creation as a process. Um, it focuses on the process of information creation and the constructed and contextual nature of source authority. So you can see here what knowledge outcomes are being assessed and what dispositions are being assessed as well. And here we have a sample question from module one um, and the instructions for this question are, please judge the usefulness of each of the proposed strategies. Use your best judgment. There is more than one correct answer for this scenario. So the question is, Jamie is an American studies, is in an American studies class and is doing research for a paper about abuse of undocumented immigrant laborers in corporate agriculture. So far, he has not been able to find many scholarly articles which are required for this paper. He did find a magazine article that really supports his argument. It is an interview from a woman who has worked on a corporate farm for 20 years. What should he do to make sure that his paper is authoritative? And you can see here with the correct answers marked with purple circles, that options one and three are very useful and options two and four are less useful. So that's the kind of question that's trying to get really in depth for module one. Module two in Tattle is called strategic searching. And this module relates to the frame searching as strategic exploration. It focuses on the process of planning, evaluating and revising searches during strategic exploration. And again, you can see the knowledge outcomes and the dispositions being assessed in module two. And here we have a sample question from module two. Um, when searching in a scholarly database, which advanced search options would be best to help you accomplish each task? Um, and I'm not sure what happened to the correct answers there. Um, but you can see each task would be matched with a search option that would give you the best results. So for task one, find only articles in the last 10 years, your students would want to select the option limit by publication date, and so on. Module three of Tattle is titled Research and Scholarship. This module combines elements from research as inquiry and scholarship as conversation from the framework. It focuses on the knowledge building process and how scholars build knowledge. And again, here we're looking at a sample question from module three. Yvonne works for a college where she has been asked to conduct research on the undergraduate student experience so that it can be improved. She and her colleagues have decided to focus on the following research question. How do extracurricular activities affect students' overall experience? And the instructions here are select the best sub-questions that will help Yvonne answer her research question. Um, select all that apply. So here the correct answers are how do, how do professors writing assignments affect students' overall college experience? And what is the relationship between students' high school GPA and their participation in extracurricular activities? And module four, the final module is called the value of information and was inspired by the information has a value frame. It focuses on the norms of academic information creation and the factors that assess that access to information. Once again, here we're looking at a sample question from module four. Eduardo is creating a blog for his marketing class about the role that barbershops have played as gathering spaces in communities. 
Each blog post is supposed to be an idea for marketing his concept to investors, and he's required to use images he finds online in each of his posts. His professor reminds the class that she has known past graduates who have used their blogs in the real world as marketing tools. So what should Eduardo do to balance his need for this assignment with the interest of photographers who created the images he's considering using? And again, as the responses, we can see the first two options are not useful at all. And the final option is very useful, and that is name and link the original source of each photo to give the creators credit like he would want credit for his work. So that is a really quick overview of all four modules and some of the sample questions that students would be asked. So um, and here's a small example of how schools who are already using Tattle have used the modules. So obviously programs is a big one for new student orientation or classes like research skills and information technology. Um, and then one institution used module two for which is strategic searching for instruction to courses across many major types. Um, so you can see accounting, art history, film studies, physics that covers a wide range of students. And this can be very helpful to show professors or instructors that InfoLit is critical for all students and the library can help no matter what the major is. And then the last example is several institutions have tested students on the same module at both the beginning and ending of a course or semester. This can be helpful to adjust the curriculum to meet students' needs more effectively, as well as assess student learning and growth. This information would also be helpful to include in library, librarians tenure and promotion packets. Um, it's a great example of this instructional effectiveness. Um, so now I'm just going to take a moment for you to reflect on which Tattle module might fit your institution's assessment goals. So if one really jumps to mind, feel free to share in the chat. If so Christine says module one, um, Amber asks what module four is, that's the value of information. Sorry, I had to go back and check. Joseph says two and three, so does Mia. And so you can see because the modules hew so closely to the frames, it's um, you can get really clear learning outcomes out of them. A lot of people are saying module two, that's great. Um, and before I move on to some of the practicalities of actually using the Tattle tool, I'm just gonna pause for a moment to see if anybody has any questions. So you can just go ahead and type those in the chat if you have them. Um, Meg asks, why do you have to choose? Um, you can, if you wish, test your students on multiple modules. Um, it's up to you. The um, volunteer board who created the tool um, wanted to get some really in-depth information about students' information literacy skills, which is why they're split up into multiple tests. Um, the questions, Therese Tessa asks, um, how were the questions developed and by who? Um, they were developed by the Tattle volunteer board. And um, if you go to the Tattle website, I'm just trying to pull up the link, you can see the history of how the test was developed. I'll pop the link in the chat for you.
Um, and then Anne asks in pre or post testing situations, are there a range of questions so students don't get the same question? I believe they would be taking basically the exact same test. Okay. Um, and then one final question. I see a couple about um, cost that we will be addressing in a moment. Um, but how long does it, how long is each module? It's designed, um, it's a fairly lengthy assessment. It's designed to be completed in I think 45 or 50 minutes. Okay, I see a lot of other good questions, but I'm in the interest of time, I'm gonna move on and we will hopefully um, answer some of these in the next few sections. So now I'm gonna talk about creating and administering tests. Um, so in order to create and administer any of the four Tattle test modules, you will first need to create a test manager account. And these accounts are free to create. You just fill out this registration form on the website and wait for your account to be confirmed. Um, all of the core functionality of the Threshold Achievement System is provided by your manager dashboard, which allows you to set up, administer, pay for, and then download reports for your Threshold Achievement tests. Once you sign into the Tattle website, you'll be presented with your manager dashboard. And this is an example of what it looks like. The test section lists all of the tests you have created, but if you need to create a new test, um, you just click on this little plus sign button and you'll be taken to a new test creation page. Um, so first is test title. You must um, enter a title for your test. Most test titles contain the time period they cover in order for it to be a little bit easier to find those results later on. Um, additionally, you have to agree to the terms of use before you can take a test. Um, and there are four, as we've discussed, there are four different modules available in Tattle. Um, so you must select which module you want to administer as only one module can be administered in a test. So we call them modules, but it might be helpful for you to think of them as four mini tests. Um, and so then you'll wanna select your institution type Institution types correspond to your Carnegie class and are used for generating um, benchmarking in the reports. Um, and then you select how you will administer your test. Um, we use this information to determine if there's, any, if there's any difference in the performance of students when the test is administered in a classroom, unsupervised, or both. Um, each student taking the test requires a unique student key to get access. Um, you can choose to keep these anonymous or tie them to student email or IDs. Um, if your institution requires that you inform your students about how you will be using the results of the test, or if you have specific information that you would like to, um, your students to see before they begin the test, you can enter this information in the informed consent field, but this is entirely optional. And you can choose to have a report of your students' results presented to them at the end of the test. If you select this option, they will be able to download their report as a PDF option. Um, but you do not have to provide students with their results if you don't wish to. Um, so for detailed instructions and like a step-by-step -step guide to creating tests, um, I would encourage you to visit the tutorial section of the website, which I have just popped into the chat. Okay, now, we're, um, so once you have selected your test and set it up and are assessing your students, I know everybody wants the results. And so Tattle reports are great. They are designed to help educators identify areas of strength 
and areas that need improvement in their students' ability to evaluate the process used to create information and the context-specific criteria that gives sources to their authority. Um, these reports support evidence-based decision-making and inform actions for strengthening student outcomes. Um, so um, in order to access your reports, you do need to pay. Um, pricing for the threshold achievement test is per student per test. Um, so there's three options. Um, the first is prepay, that is $8 a student. Um, to prepay for a test, you must specify that the number of students specify the number of students you will test and generate an invoice prior to starting the test. And then you'll be able to test up to the number of students you specified. Once you have reached this number, testing will stop automatically and no new students will be able to begin the test. This is a fixed payment regardless of the number of students who complete the test and no refunds are given if you do not reach the number of students you have specified. If you're not sure how many students will be completing the exam, we do offer a post pay option that's $9 a student per test. Um, to post pay for a test, you just administer the test as you would normally to as many students as you would wish. And you are only charged for students who are included in your report. Students who do not who start but do not complete the test or, or do, who do not consent to have their responses used are not included in the report and you're not charged for these students. Finally, we offer an unlimited annual contract option. This is for large scale testing. Um, and with this contract, there's no limit to the number of tests you can administer um, and no limit to the number of students you can test. And the contract time periods span um, the academic year, which is for Tattle defined as June 15th of one year through May 31st of the next. The price on this is 50 cents per enrolled student with a minimum charge of $10,000. So um, for an institution with an enrollment of 24,000, the annual contract would cost $12,000. Institutions interested in large-scale testing may find this an attractive alternative as opposed to paying on the per-student model. So the PDF reports that Tattle produces are quite extensive. You can see they have seven sections and two appendices. And today we will be looking at a sample report for module one, which is evaluating process and authority. The report presents overall and detailed results for your students. The high level summary of results on both the knowledge and disposition dimensions for your students at your institution is provided in section three, summary of the results, along with cross institutional comparisons. Your local results are compared to other institutions in order to give an indication of how your students performed relative to other students who may have similar exposure to information literacy instruction. Sections four and five offer details about knowledge performance. Section four shows the overall mean score for all students and the subgroup breakouts for the standard questions you've selected. Section four also gives cross institutional comparisons. And then section five provides more details on the knowledge results by presenting data on each knowledge outcome, along with breakouts and those comparisons. Um, and then section six prevent, presents details about dispositional performance and section seven offers suggestions for targeted reading. So here we're looking at the knowledge results for module one. Um, so all knowledge items are based on information literacy outcomes and performance indicators created by the test developers and advisory board of librarians and other indicators. 
Items assess an array of cognitive processes that college students develop as they transition from pre-college to college ready to research ready. Items are presented in a variety of structured response formats to assess students' information literacy knowledge, skills, and abilities, ranging from understanding to critical thinking to problem solving. Students who attain knowledge of information literacy concepts and practices are well positioned to effectively address their information needs and contribute meaningfully to the information ecosystem. The knowledge dimension measured by this module specifically addresses students' abilities to apply their knowledge of source context and creation processes to judging source authority and analyzing claims. So here in figure 3.1, um, we're looking at how the average score and it, for your students and the average score for institutional groups. If you can see here um, in this top bar on the very top, you can see that the average score for this test of students falls into the college ready or green performance level, right where that little red line is. Additionally, you can see that this institution's average score, which is um, 511 plus or minus 15, is higher than their peers and their Carnegie class. So this is a great um, example of how you can um, advocate for your library, show how you're um, doing as well or better than your peer institutions. So additional knowledge results visualizations show the mean score and standard error for your students. The number and percentage of students in the three performance levels is displayed in the corresponding pie chart with those legends underneath. Also shown are your selected peer institutions and your institution type and all institutions. So across the report, you'll always have these three um, comparison points. Um, results can also be viewed by demographic fields, which include class standing, transfer students, majors, and level of English language proficiency. Um, so you can see here um, in figure 4.2, we have the class standing. And again, that's broken out by your institution with the mean, and then those three peer comparison groups we were discussing. These graphs are for the overall knowledge scores for the test module you selected. Similar graphs and charts are available for every um, individual knowledge item. So here we're looking at the performance indicators for the knowledge results. Performance indicators are ranked by your students' overall performance from strongest to weakest. The ranking is a relative ordering and does not indicate how well your students performed on a particular performance indicator. A blue bar indicates that your student's mean score is higher than or equal to the mean score of your peer institutions. A red bar indicates that your student's mean score is lower than the mean score of your peer institutions. So in this example, there's only one red option and that is match the source type with the amount of time it usually takes to publish it. This is a great indicator of um, if you may want to focus more on this in your information literacy instruction or if you decide that this is not something that needs to be addressed. Now we're going to talk about dispositions. Dispositions play an important role in learning transfer and by that, I mean it indicates a student's willingness to consistently apply they've, the skills they have learned in one setting to novel problems in a new setting. The ACRL framework highlights dispositions, which constitute effective facets of information literacy because they're essential to students' info-lit outcomes. Dispositions interact with a student's process of defining ill-structured information problems within a new environment so that the student can transfer this learning to new problems. Dispositions are latent traits that function on an unconscious level and determine whether or not a student can transfer learning and move beyond a superficial understanding of the material. There's no overall disposition score for the modules, 
because each disposition is unique or is distinct and some dispositions may work in opposition to each other. So the example we're looking at here is for the disposition mindful self-reflection. And again, you can see that according to the legend, um, weakly disposed is displayed in orange, moderately disposed is displayed in pink, and strongly disposed is displayed in blue. And again, you see your institution's mean scores compared to those three peer groups that we've been talking about. So the students in this example's mean score for the set of problem solving items about mindful self-reflection falls into the moderately disposed range. Scores in this range suggest that students are able to recognize the difference between their own information preferences and the sources considered authoritative by the academic community. So they're likely to follow their professor and librarian's guidelines about the types of sources to select. And again, these results can be viewed by demographic field, which once again include class standing, transfer students, majors, and level of English language proficiency. So here we are looking at uh, comparisons by class standing and by major. So that was a really quick overview of the reports. They're really a rich resource and they provide great information about how your students are doing and are a great jumping off point for library advocacy. Um, I know I've been going pretty fast, but I just wanted to stop for a moment um, to reiterate the benefits of Tattle. So we all know that information literacy is a vital part of the library's story. And Tattle can help you identify student areas of strength and weakness in InfoLit, which can help improve library instruction and student outcomes. Um, and the reports are great for showing student improvement, either in an individual course or semester to semester. And again, those pre-made visualizations with the benchmarks make it easy to use that Tattle information to advocate for your library within your institution. So it's a really valuable tool and um, that's definitely something that will help you with your information literacy. All right, I've seen a lot of questions come in while I'm talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up in the chat and see if I can get them all answered. So if I miss your question, please do type it in again. Okay, Morgan asks a question about pricing. Um, about her 1300 students being tested. Um, yes, if you wanted to test your whole school, it would be more beneficial to um, purchase the unlimited annual contract, but typically institutions do not do full school testing. Um, anecdotally, we often see um, first year and senior students being tested the most or specific courses. Um, Jillian asks, so if the student doesn't want to see their results, the library doesn't get their results either. Oh, sorry for the confusion. Those are two separate options. So um, you can opt to have the students receive their individual PDF results um, or not. That does not affect the um, institution or admin level report. Um, Anne asks, do institutions get to choose which other institutions they're compared to in reports? Yes, they do. During the report creation process, you will be allowed to select your peer institutions. Um, Catherine asks, are we able to select individual questions from all modules and create our own tests? Not at the moment, but the Tattle Editorial Board, which is the volunteer committee that oversees this work, is considering a um, creating a kind of one size fits all test that um, covers all four modules um, in a less intensive fashion. 
Um, Morgan asks again, how many institutions are completing this and how are peers selected? Um, I don't have the number of institutions um, using Tattle offhand, but you are able to um, select your own peer institutions during the report creation process. Um, and then you will be automatically compared to your Carnegie class as well. Um, Leslie asks, how are tests addressing accessibility disabilities? Um, so we are working with our technical development partner, Community Attributes, to keep the tests in line with the, um, oh, what is it called, WGA2 web accessibility requirements. So um, I don't know if you want more information on that, um, but please feel free to ask if you want more details. Um, and then Emery asks, what accommodations are available for test administration and for data review presentation? Um, the tests are administered online and um, they are in that web accessibility compliance. We, um, we do, um, there's many accommodations you can provide. Um, separate from that, we, there's not a time, the tests aren't timed. We do give kind of that frame so students know what to expect, but they can take as long as they would like. Um, you could, um, you know, administer the test in your library with a staff person there for any questions. Um, if Again, if you have more specifics, please do let us know. Um, Jackie has asked, there have been recent changes to Tattle. Can you discuss those updates? Um, I'm not sure if you're asking about something specifically. We um, acquired the tool from Carrick Enterprises and just kind of picked it up and moved it over to ACRL. We did not make any substantive changes to the tool. The questions are reviewed on an annual basis um, by the Tattle Editorial Board. So there may be some slight changes to the wording of the questions, um, mainly for relevancy. You know, they've removed references to outdated softwares like MySpace or LimeWire. So, um, but we haven't made any substantive changes to the test since acquiring it as an ACRL product. Um, that was all the questions I saw. If I missed your question again, please do type it into the chat again. Um, we encourage you to get in touch. If you have any questions or issues, um, you can email us at tattle at ala.org. And I also want to mention, if you're interested in previewing the test, we do offer that option. Um, so please email us and we will um, send you a link to the demo for the module of your choice. So you can get in there and um, see all the questions being asked and experience the test as if you were a student. Um, I'm very excited for this to be an ACRL product, and I think it has great value to the field. So please don't hesitate to reach out. I am the staff member in charge. You will be hearing from me um, if you reach out. So I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. And thank you so much for attending today's webinar. You'll be receiving the recording shortly via email. Um, and then I saw Tessa had a question, can Tattle be adapted with permission? Um, that would be a larger conversation for us to have. Um, so please email me if that's something you're interested in doing at your institution. Again, thank you for coming. Don't hesitate to reach out for it with any additional questions. And I look forward to hearing from you and hope Tattle is a valuable tool for your institution.